Uh, hello to uh, hello everyone. This is the second lecture on composite materials. Uh, it is composite manufacturing process, and the composite manufacturing process is uh, most widely useful for uh, production of bulk materials, which are having large size, uh, like. Uh, as you see from this picture, many large components are manufactured from composites. This is because of the Tyler defect or the flexibility of composites in manufacturing technology. Uh, for example, if we see the large blade of turbine blades, this manufactured from uh, composite. Again, the uh, fuselage of uh, Dreamliner aircraft and the power production plants because are manufactured from composite. The objective of today's uh, lecture is, uh, at the end of this lecture, the learner will be able to identify and implement brief definition of advanced composite. It is not composite, but advanced composite materials and constituents. Different composite materials and their application in engineering field. Composite manufacturing process. Variety of composite manufacturing processes are there. So these are uh, highlighted in this lecture. Classification of composite manufacturing process. Various composite manufacturing process. Selection of composite manufacturing process. The raw materials used for composite processing and composite uh, material cutting. How we can cut composite and the design requirement of composites. Okay, before starting the uh, today's lecture, uh, we have to summarize some points from the last lecture, which are very important and which links today's lecture to the next part of the advanced composite part. So on this composite definition, already uh, it is, uh, I defined it briefly in the last lecture or lecture uh, series one. So it is consists of two distinct phase of material which together improve mechanical performance and low production cost. The raw materials are commonly matrix and reinforcements for the production of advanced composite. The matrix materials act as a binder for reinforcement while controlling the physical shape and dimensions of the part. Its primary purpose is to transfer the load or the stress applied to the part to the reinforcement. The matrix also protects the reinforcement from the uh, adverse environment. The reinforcement functions is to enhance the mechanical property of the composite and is typical the main load bearing elements. Reinforcements are usually in the form of either fiber or particles or flake or sheets. Advanced composite materials have been used for, to fabricate many structural parts in the engineering application. This is due to their many attractive characteristics like lightweight, high strength, high stiffness, good fatigue resistance, and good corrosion resistance. And also the uh, better uh, uh, specific properties like uh, specific strength, specific uh, stiffness. These things are uh, very good in the case of composites. Also, the ability of manufacture parts with complicated geometries with pair component enable manufacturers to save costs as compared with the parts made by conventional metallic materials. Composite laminates is an assembly of layers of fibrous composite material, which can be joined to provide required engineering properties, including plane stiffness, bending stiffness, strengths, and the coefficient of thermal expansion. So 
So sometimes uh, some of the stacking sequences in the case of laminated composite, we use 0, 90, 45, minus 45. Actually, this type is uh, uh, the most common stacking. Or there are a variety of stack, stacking of uh, it's the sequence are there. These are the most common advanced structural composites. The first one is, uh, this is the honeycomb structure. Uh, let me, okay, laser pointer. So uh, this is the honeycomb structure, which is made up of uh, the honeycomb uh, face sheet or metallic face sheet and with adhesive material joined together to form a lightweight fabricated sandwich panel. This is a sandwich panel which is uh, manufactured from honeycomb structure and which is less dense and uh, benefit is a small weight, large bending stiffness. The second category of uh, advanced structural composite is a co laminated composite. So, the laminated composite consists of lamina, which is a single ply, which is made up of fiber and uh, matrix material. Fiber and the matrix material joined together in a particular fabrication method, and we can get lamina. Lamina is a single ply. And then these lamina are stuck together in different direction to form laminate. This is a laminate which is made up of many laminas. Maybe it can be 20 or it can be 30. Uh, depending on the design requirement, laminas, laminates are made from uh, different. For example, this zero, zero lamina, 90 lamina, 45 lamina, minus 45 lamina stuck together to form a quasi-isotropic lamina. So this type of lamina is called, the lamina made from this category is quasi-isotropic lamina. And once laminate, laminate is manufactured, then we can further use the laminate for other structural purposes, like as cylindrical shaped or curved profiles of shapes can be the post uh, manufacturing process. So this is after the laminate manufacturing. Another category of uh, uh, advanced composite is the uh, fiber metal laminate type. This is also made from uh, different uh, fibers uh, the uh, metals or the metal sheets are stacked together with the unidirectional pre preg laminate, which is zero or 90 direction pre preg and then form the better, uh, better material, which is called FML, that is fiber metal laminates. Some of this category are aluminum alloy laminates like ARAL, glass reinforcement aluminum laminate, like glare. So these are some category of these advanced composites. So in advanced composites, the uh, metallic sheets are placed at the, uh, uh, intermittently with the advanced composites. And the advanced composites join together to form uh, some other property, which is not known in individual. So both of these combine together and finally gives a better uh, material properties. So metal, fiber reinforced composite, again metal, again fiber reinforced composite and metal. So this is a, a type of advanced composite. So, as we have discussed in last lecture, advanced, uh, these composite materials are currently uh, most widely using in the world, including the uh, large aircraft like Boeing 787 or other aircraft to a small 
uh, utensils in the house. So based on that, it's used for aerospace applications like uh, Boeing company use, like other uh, military uh, aircrafts. Uh, it used for the power production for turbine blades, for the structural uh, materials, for sport goods, for the uh, racing vehicles and cars, and also other functions. Even this time, it most widely used uh, use for the uh, medical purpose also. The uh, this composite is made from the fiber and the matrix material, so we have to know the characteristics of what type of fiber we are using. What is the characteristics of each of the fiber? What is the characteristics of the matrix? So the most commonly used fibers are glass fiber, graphite fiber, that glass fiber, S glass or E glass, or there are other category of glass fibers. Graphite fiber, boron fiber, armite, or in it is trade name Kevlar fiber, and others are the fiber types most widely used. So, which fiber type we are using for what purpose? So that is represented. So, when we are requiring for high strength, low stiffness, high density, low cost, then we use glass fiber. Again, there are uh, different types of matrix material. The most dominant are the, the uh, polymer matrix and metal matrix and ceramic matrix. But the polymer matrix categorized into thermoset or uh, thermoset type and thermoplastic type that depending on their uh, polymerization reaction. So thermoset is are epoxy and polyester, with the former uh, most commonly used. Others are phenolics, fluorocarbons, um, poly, polyether sulfonates, silicon, and polyamides. Thermoplastics are like polyether ether ketone, that we call it uh, generally PEG. Uh, tougher than the thermoset, but lower resistance to temperature. Another metal matrix. So aluminum, aluminum, lithium, magnesium, titanium, and others are metal matrix. Ceramic matrix is a silicon carbide, silicon nitride, aluminum oxide, and aluminate fibers are various ceramic uh, matrix. So these things, uh, we put them in the matrix form. It is the possible combination of these things. Uh, these are matrix materials at the uh, uh, top rows. And in the column, then uh, reinforcement materials. So metal matrix, ceramic matrix, matrix, metal reinforcement, ceramic, and polymer reinforcement. So based on this, we can get the combination of this property as MMCS, that metal matrix composite, CMCS, ceramic matrix composite, PMCS, or polymer matrix composite. So metal matrix composites are the uh, uh, composites offer high modulus of elasticity, ductility, and resistance to elevated temperature than polymer matrix composite. But they are heavier and more difficult to process. So these are some of the metal matrix composites. The fibers are graphite. The metal, uh, the fibers involved in metal matrix composites are graphite, boron, aluminum, silicon carbide. Uh, molybdenum, tungsten are the fibers. And the matrix are aluminum, magnesium, lead, copper. In the case of boron uh, fiber uh, reinforcement, aluminum, magnesium, titanium. And these are all the matrix type based on uh, the requirements. 
for example, the combination of graphite aluminum, uh, graphite fiber aluminum matrix, we, uh, you, we use it for the satellite missiles and helicopter structures. In the case of graphite magnesium, then space and satellite structures will be made from this. Uh, graphite and lead combination storage battery plates and so on. Ceramic matrix composites are uh, used in applications where resistance to high temperature and corrosive environments is desired. These are uh, strong and stiff, but lack, it lacks the toughness or ductility. This matrix uh, materials are uh, usually silicon carbide, silicon nitride, and aluminum oxide, and mullets are the matrix material. They retain their temperature up to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and fiber materials used commonly are carbon and aluminum oxide. So application of ceramic matrix composite are for the jet and automobile engine, uh, deep sea mining, cutting tools, dice and pressure vessel applications. Polymer matrix composites are uh, fiber reinforced plastics. These are referred to as uh, reinforced plastics. Commonly, uh, the common fiber used in this case are glass, uh, fiber reinforced plastic, graphite, boron, and armite fibers are the most common fibers. These fibers have high uh, specific strengths, that is strength to weight ratio, and the specific stiffness. Matrix materials usually thermoplastic or thermoset, like polyester, epoxy. About 80% of reinforced plastics uh, fluorocarbon, silicon, phenolic are the matrix materials. So now we are going to start the main part of today's lecture because uh, what we have discussed yet uh, belongs to the last uh, class lecture, but it is very important here. That's why I um, include it in advance. So composite manufacturing technology. So this is the technology which um, for last uh, 14 or four decades or 14 years, many exploration uh, have been made on this, especially on fiber reinforced plastics in engineering structure for the purpose of engineering structures and has been diversifying from sport equipment to aerospace components. Composite materials are essentially a combination of two or more dissimilar materials that are used together in order to combine best properties or impart a new set of characteristics that neither of the constituent material could have achieved on their own. Engineering composites are typically built up of from individual ply that take the form of continuous straight fibers embedded in the host ply matrix, which are laminated layer by layer in order to build up the final structure. So this is the classification, especially classification of uh, composite manufacturing process. Uh, fiber reinforced plastic composites shaping processes uh, classified into two. That is continuous fiber shaping process and short fiber shaping process. So when we come to continuous fiber shaping process, uh, it includes open mold process, closed mold process, filament winding process, poltrusion process, and tube rolling and others. Again, in the process of short fiber, case, closed mold process, open mold process, and others are also employed. So uh, this is the classification. So when we come to open mold process, hand lay up, 
automated top line, compression molding, rising transfer molding are some of these things. Uh, actually, in open case, hand layup and automated top line, like in the closed molding process, compression molding, resin transfer molding, or we call it as RTM. In the case of closed mold process, compression molding, transfer molding, injection molding are some of the uh, closed molding process. And open molding, spray up, is one of the next compression molding and uh, yeah, compression molding is also another uh, this category. Large number of composite manufacturing process have been developed over the last 14 years. So some of these are hand layup, vacuum bagging, or auto autoclave molding, compression molding, liquid resin molding, poltrusion, flame and twining, injection molding, thermoplastic processing, automated tapping line out, as we have uh, classified above. So contact molding, rotational molding, top wrapping, expand bladder molding, ETC are uh, some of the manufacturing process. All these processes have several characteristics in common. The reinforcements are brought into the required shape in the tool or molds. Resin and fibers are brought together, possibly under elevated temperature, and the pressure to cure the resin, and the molding steeped from the part once the resin has cured. The different fabrication techniques can either be classified as direct process, like resin transfer, uh, trans, uh, transfer molding, Poultrygen, contact molding, that use separate fibers and resin together at a point of molding, or indirect processes that use fibers as pre-impregnated with resin, uh, example, vacuum bag or autoclave molding and compression molding. Open mold process, uh, closed mold process, flame and twining, poltrygen, these are already what we have discussed. When we come to open mold process, it includes uh, hand layup, spray up, vacuum bag molding, pressure bag molding, thermal expansion molding, uh, autoclave molding, centrifugal casting, continuous poltrygen, and uh, full forming. So this one by one we can see them. Uh, in the next section. The selection of this process, the selection of this manufacturing process depends on a variety of factors. Some of the factors include the high productivity, that short cycle time, low level uh, content, minimum material cost is another factor. So in this manner, uh, in this case, low value added materials, low material storage and handling cost. Maximum geometrical flexibility is another criteria that when shape, complexity and size of the component is required. Maximum property flex, uh, flexibility. This range of uh, matrix, range of reinforcement type, ability to uh, control mechanical property and tailored characteristics of the composite. Because of that, the maximum property flexibility also expected. Another selection parameter is minimum finishing requirements that net shape manufacture. A reliable and high quality manufacture that like uh, low reject rate, low uh, variability. These are uh, some of the criteria uh, in the selection of manufacturing process or uh, composite manufacturing process. So when we come to the, this diagram, it shows the selection criteria still, like the flexibility of properties, flexibility of geometry, that geometrical flexibility is one of the requirements. 
the material property flexibility, the size potential, productivity, tooling cost, lever skill, some of the composite manufacturing process needs uh, less skill manpower. So the quality of the product is also another uh, requirement. So the compact molding, vacuum back or autoclave molding, filament uh, winding, rising transfer molding, pulse region. So in each of them, look here, uh, you can see this size flexibility. In the case of contact molding, we can obtain size flexibility and also tooling cost. So these are uh, the selection criteria for uh, contact molding. In the case of vacuum bagging or autoclave molding, we can see this, the quality. When we need high quality of uh, product, then we select the vacuum bagging or autoclave molding. When we come to flannel winding, the requirement is the quality also. Quality is uh, one of the requirements. Resin transfer case, the flexibility of property is required. Again, also the flexibility of geometry also required. And also the quality will be the next. And when we come to poltrusion, uh, it is productivity. Productivity is the major criteria. And then tooling cost and also decrease in this manner. Now, type of composite materials. Uh, it is better to uh, see some uh, composite materials and then we'll go for the uh, composite manufacturing process again. So materials most commonly we are using as uh, there are five basic type of composite materials based on the fiber material used. These are the continuous fiber, particulate, plaque, laminar, and field composites. So these type of composites are fiber composites. And this is a particle composites. Particles of reinforcements are randomly distributed over the volume of the uh, uh, composite here. Here also uh, fibers, continuous fibers, which are randomly distributed. And when we come to laminar composite, uh, individual laminates are stuck together, laminates with different uh, uh, angles, uh, which are stuck together to form a, lamina, a laminate. So these are laminas, and laminas are stuck together at their interface with uh, bonding agents, and then form a composite lamina, a laminate. This is a flake type composites. Flakes are somehow uh, granular shaped uh, fiber particles and field composite. This is a field type of composite. Fiber composite uh, are different types actually in fiber composite, the fiber reinforcement along the line of their lengths. Reinforcement may be one dimensional, two dimensional, or three dimensional. In the case of one dimensional, uh, it gives maximum strength in one direction only. This is called unidirectional, but the direction of reinforcement in only in one direction. The remaining two dimension, for example, if it is given in X direction, then Y and Z is resin uh, rich zone so that it is um, uh, susceptible for damage. Another two-dimensional uh, gives strength is two, two dimension. For example, it may be in X and Y, and then the third dimension is uh, without reinforcement. And the third one is three-dimensional. That is known as isotropic. That gives strength equally in all directions. That's why it is called isotropic. The second category is particle composites. So particle composites usually reinforced with equally in all direction, called isotropic. That plastic, 
salmates and metals are example of this category. So particles used strength in, in matrix do not do so in the same way as the fiber. For one thing, particles are not directional like fibers. Particles spread in random throughout the matrix. Thus, it tends to reinforce in all directions equally. So this is a particle reinforced type. Flake composites are consists of thin flake, flat flakes held by binder or uh, placed in the matrix. Almost all flake composite matrix are plastic resins. These most uh, important flake composites are uh, the aluminum, the mica, and the glass are the flake composites. Basically, flake composites provide uniform mechanical property in the uh, plane of flake, high strength and high flex uh, flexural modulus, higher dielectric strength and heat resistance, better resistance to penetration by liquid and vapor, and low cost. Laminar composites. These are the type of composite that made from uh, laminas. The plies or lamina, we call sometimes ply or sometimes lamina. So laminas are joined together or uh, stacked together one over the other and uh, to, to, to get a desired uh, property as well as to get the required thickness of the material, they stack together in a sequence that is uh, known as stacking. The layers can be arranged in different directions to give desired strength. And the layers type on sequence to get requiredness. So the speedboat hulls are among the various products of this category. We can divide laminar composite into three basic class. That's unidirectional. That is one directionally fiber is reinforced in one direction. Uh, reinforced layer composites that are the stacked composites, like one uh, uh, layer over the other. And the third category is the uh, fiber metal laminate type. That is, uh, laminates are prepared separately. The metal sheets come together and stacked again for further uh, uh, requirements. So these are the laminar uh, composites. Uh, here, a simple definition of what a laminate or lamina, or it is sometimes called ply, is an, any arrangement of UD or woven fibers in a matrix. Usually this arrangement is flat, although it may be uh, curved in sometimes. And the laminate is a stack of lamina. A number of laminas are stacked in a designed manner. Most of the time, this design depends on the requirement. So arranged with main reinforcement in the, in at least two directions. Field uh, composite. These are two type field composite. Filler materials are added in uh, normal composite, results strengthening the composite and reducing the weight. The second is the uh, second type of field composite, uh, a skeletal 3D matrix holding a second material. The most widely used composite of second type are sandwich structures and honeycomb structures. Reinforcing bars. So reinforcing bars are uh, commonly uh, from glass, carbon, kevlar, and other fibers. In some fabrication process, the filaments are continuous, while in other are chopped fibers or uh, short length fibers are used. The most familiar form of continuous fiber is close, that a fabric of woven yarn. Fibers can also be a mat form a flat consisting of random oriented short fibers held loosely together with binder. Mats are co commercially available as blankets of various weight. 
thickness and width. Math can be uh, cut and shaped for use as performed in some of the uh, closed mold process. During molding, the resin impregnates the uh, free form and then cures this yielding the fiber reinforced uh, molding. So we have actually woven fibers and then woven uh, fibers. Now, many fibers, uh, fibers are there, but we uh, give emphasis here only for carbon fiber. And the remaining, uh, maybe if uh, time allowed, we can see it later. But how we can, uh, what is the carbon fiber? What is the classification? And what is the production process of carbon fiber will be uh, discussed in this lecture. So carbon fibers are fibers about five to 10 micrometers. That is the size of the diameter of fiber is in microns, that is five to 10 micro. And uh, composed mostly of carbon atoms. Carbon fibers have several advantages, including high stiffness, high tensile strength, low weight, high chemical resistance, high temperature tolerance, and low thermal expansion. These properties have made carbon fiber very popular in aerospace in civil engineering, in military, in motor sports, along with other uh, competition sports. However, they are relatively expensive when compared with similar fibers, such as glass fiber or uh, plastic fibers. Classification and type. Based on the modulus, the strengths, and final heat treatment temperature, carbon fibers can be classified into uh, the following categories. Uh, the f it is classification is based on carbon fiber properties. The first classification and carbon fiber can be grouped into ultra high modulus, that is UHM, when the modulus greater than 450 gigapascal is required. Uh, high modulus, when 350 to 450 gigapascal modulus is uh, required. Intermediate modulus, that is 200 to 350 gigapascal. Low modulus, when it is less than 100 gigapascal and tensile strains of greater than three gigapascal. And super high tensile, which is uh, greater than 4.5 gigapascal uh, strains is required. Again, carbon fiber also classified based on the uh, precursor fiber material. This precursor means the raw material uh, which is used in the uh, manufacturing of fiber, carbon fiber manufacturing, that is the raw material. So that pan-based uh, carbon fiber, pitch-based carbon, mesophase pitch-based carbon, uh, isotropic pitch-based carbon fiber, round-based carbon fiber, and gas phase grown carbon fiber. This is based on the precursor. The raw material for the carbon production is um, called precursor. This precursor is the raw material. So about 90% of carbon fiber produce, uh, produced are made from uh, poly uh, polyacryl ac acrylone nitride. This is the raw material. The remaining 10% are made from rayon or petroleum pitch. All of the materials are organic polymers characterized by long strings of molecular uh, molecules bound together by carbon atoms. The exact composition of the precursor varies from uh, one company to another. Actually, it is uh, company dependent, but the carbon, um, so this is the manufacturing process, the flow chart of precursor production. So before going to uh, carbon fiber production, we have to see the 
precursor production. So how the precursor produce? So let's see. Acryl uh, nitrile is supplied and the co-monomers. And these things uh, goes through the polymerization uh, reaction. And then finally polymers are uh, obtained. Then polymers with solvent gives us a solari, that molten solari. And then dissolution of the molten solari and doping of uh, will be take place, binary filtration, after filtration, spining or coagulation process will take place, then washing and the drying, finishing, drying, winding, uh, winding, then finally precursor is uh, the uh, raw material for the production of carbon. Then this precursor will go to the next step. So then uh, here, a pan or pitch based precursor. So let's, uh, let's take the pan uh, precursor. So this pan precursor uh, will go through the oxidation process uh, in the temperature of 200 to 300 degrees centigrade and goes to carburization in the temperature range of 700 to uh, about uh, 1,500 degrees centigrade, and then carbon fiber will be obtained. So how it goes, this is the flow chart of uh, carbon production, carbon fiber, raw material. For example, this is a pan-based precursor. The pan precursor is taken as raw material, oxidation process to 300 degrees centigrade, then free carburization, again carburization to 1,800 degrees centigrade, then surface treatment, that is anodic salt solution treatment, and then washing with hot water, drying with air or hot water, uh, hot rolled contact, and then sizing, sizing it with epoxy resin water-based, drying, then winding. Finally, we can get different grade of uh, carbon fiber. That is high strength carbon fiber, intermediate modulus carbon fiber, high modulus carbon fiber, as we discussed in the uh, previous slide. And also, actually, graphization also process also there in the production of carbon. After carbonization, graphization. Properties of carbon fiber. So there are many uh, properties like uh, high strength to weight ratio, um, very good, uh, very rigid corrosion resistance and chemically stable, electrically conductive, resistance to fatigue. Again, carbon fibers are good tensile strains. Resistance to flame, that uh, non-flammable actually. Uh, thermal conductivity of carbon fibers, good. Low coefficient of thermal expansion, non-poison or poisons biologically inherent, X-ray uh, permeable. So this positive aspect uh, make the carbon fiber uh, most popular in most aspect of uh, composite manufacturing. Characteristics and application of carbon fibers. The physical strengths, specific toughness, lightweight, when this is related is aerospace or road and marine transportation or sport goods. High dimensional stability, low coefficient of thermal expansion and low abrasion, which makes it suitable for missiles, aircraft brakes, aerospace antenna, and sport structural, large telescope, optical vanes, waveguides for stable high frequency, uh, precision measurement frames. Good vibration and uh, 
damping strength and toughness make the carbon fiber as audio equipment loudspeakers for hi-fi equipment pack up my arms robot arms so these are uh, characteristics uh, and uh, it is a requirement the stage in the manufacturing uh, of composite uh, there are some stages which exist primarily matrix material in the form of liquid can fiber with in the form of bundle this and filament as a bundle of filament again fabric of woven type these are the raw materials the initial raw materials these are in the um, micro level these materials are considered in the micro level so these micro levels are transformed actually transformed to some other uh, larger size by combining them together so when fiber and the matrix combine together we get some other uh, for example lamina made from fiber uh, reinforcing fiber and matrix by as a binder so lamina will be obtained this process is called uh, micromechanics transformation or level one transformation or micromechanics the science of uh, this thing is micromechanics so this is in the micro level that uh, fibers are from 5 to 10 micrometer Again, matrix are in the micro level, so they combine together to form a laminate of 2D or uh, kind of uh, laminate having some thickness. So uh, this is uh, micro mechanics. Then these laminates, a number of laminates stuck together, that forms a laminate. Uh, lamina, laminas are stuck together to form laminate. So. This is lamina, and this one is laminate. So maybe it is four, five, six, or 30 or 50 lamina stuck together and form laminate. That is called macromechanics, the transformation or second level transformation. And this lamina also further uh, goes to manufacturing process or some shaping process to obtain curved laminates. For example, this cylindrical curved laminate is made from, uh, or structure is made from, the straight lamina, uh, laminate. So this is uh, the stage of existence of constituents and manufacturing of composite. The matrix most commonly used uh, in composite preparation is thermoset matrix that uh, polymers are the most common matrix material. So principal thermoset polymers are phenolics uh, used with uh, particulate reinforcing phase, polyesters, epoxies, most closely associated with fiber reinforced polymers, and thermoplastic uh, molding compound, including fillers or uh, reinforcing agents. Nearly all the rubbers are reinforced with carbon black.
So this is uh, one of the production process that prepared for me. So this is the machine which shows the free break for me. So how the free break for me take place? Uh, we can see here, the reinforcement fibers are in the form of roll, comes and dipped into rising bus. There is a bus here. This is a epoxy or resin bus and goes through this. Then it hits on the oven. And after heating, it goes to a uh, further process here. And se separation films will be added on it. Then the pre prepreg will be uh, winded here. So this is the manufacturing process for pre prepreg forming. And this is a machine for free freight forming. What is the advantage of uh, free freight forming? What is the disadvantage? The advantage are orientation of fiber can be changed. Consistency in the manufacturing, high productivity. And these advantages are continuous process needs more customers so that there must be more customers for this uh, to uh, apply this process. Small scale production cannot be achieved with this. Limited shelf time and delamination problem. That is very critical in the laminated composite. The damage of laminated composite is delamination. Open mold process. So this schematic diagram shows the open mold process. Uh, that is uh, for fiber reinforced polymer uh, composite process. Some of the open mold process include hand lay up, spray up, vacuum bagging, and automated top line uh, machines are used. So what is on this machine? Uh, a catalyzed resin comes through this line to here, and there is um, uh, uh, for example, here, this is laminate. The laminate is placed here. Again, core material is there. Resin flow medium is also here. And vacuum bag is here. This is uh, the one which covering. And the excess uh, resin will come out through vacuum pump here. So this is the uh, open mold uh, process. Hand layup technique is another uh, manufacturing technique. For hand layup, uh, open molds for fiberglass, uh, polyester, or dry tower or dry fabric are laid on mold. Liquid resin is then poured on and spread onto the fiber beds. A few layers are wetted and left to cure in open air. After these layers are cured, more layers are added. For example, this is one of the hand lay manually hand layer process. So many layers of zero degree, 90 degree, uh, plus 45, minus 45, and uh, 90, zero degree laminates, laminas are stuck together in uh, using hand layer manually. For other intricate shapes like curved profile, this type of, there is hand roller, there is roller here, a resin or catalyzed are uh, put over the uh, surface here. This is the mold. Mold with a desired shape will be uh, free, uh, prepared, and on the mold, every raw materials will be filled. So this is the mold. Uh, on mold, release film that to separate the uh, product or the uh, hand lab product from the mold, there must be some separation film. So release film will be poured over there. Then after gel coating, on the gel coating, fiberglass reinforcement will be uh, placed on it. And then uh, resin will be poured on it and uh, hand rollers using hand or roller manually, this will be made. 
another uh, this is also the same thing you see here how is making so this is the mold having this shape so any kind of shapes can be easily made with this manually so resin will be poured on it and the roller will be consolidated over this is the dry fiber dry fiber is here uh, gel coating um, resin pour and then we can finally get this shaped uh, product so open mold shaping method in which successive layer of resin and reinforcement are manually applied to an open mold to build the laminate reinforced uh, composite structure it is a lever intensive method finished uh, molding must usually be trained with uh, some uh, material cutting uh, tools to avoid excessive edge uh, maximum size is unlimited this is advantage we can un produce unlimited size of material part geometry from simple to complex parts can be achieved production volume from low to medium cycle time is slow this is disadvantage so the production cycle time is slow means uh, that is disadvantage surface finish can be uh, from good to excellent tooling cost is very low that is advantage equipment cost is very low that is also another advantage So this is also another schematic of hand layup, uh, spraying actually over the surface that, um, and rolling. So almost the same. So hand layup method, uh, mold is treated with mold release agent. This is uh, actually stepwise. Um, a thin gel coat is applied to the outside surface of mold. When gel coat has partially set, layers of resin and fiber are applied. The fiber is the former of the mat or clothes. It is form of mat or clothes. Each layer is rolled to impregnate the fiber with resin and remove air. Part is allowed to cure and fully hardened part is removed from the mold cavity. So the application of this hand layout uh, is for both hulls, swimming, uh, sometimes swimming pools can be made from this, large container tanks, movie and storage pumps, and other uh, formed sheets. So, handle up uh, low cost tools, that is advantage. The versatility, that wide range of products is also another advantage. But the disadvantage is it is time consuming, easy to form air bubble, so that uh, defect also expected, and distortion of the fibers, and inconsistency of the production. Another almost similar uh, mechanism of uh, production is spray up. In the spray up process, uh, we have fiber rubbing from here. It comes to the here, and also the catalyst or the uh, resin is poured into uh, this chamber. So the, this inside of this, the fibers are chopped, or fiber will cut into a small piece or chop so with the help of chop, uh, chopper gun. So both of the uh, uh, fiber as well as the resin or catalyst spread over the surface like this. This is uh, uh, fiber, this is fiber, and this is resin, the yellow one is resin. So resin supply is there, fiber is come here, both of them uh, using the uh, spray. And then finally, rolling over the surface. So reinforcement also added, polymer resin also added on it, releasing agents also there. So this is the uh, spray up method. 
So in the spray of methods, liquid resin and choked fibers are sprayed simultaneously into an open mold to build successive layer of uh, laminate, laminations. Attempt to uh, uh, mechanize application of resin fiber line and reduce uh, layer of time. This is also the same. Here liquid resin come through this pipe and continuous rubbing uh, wire comes here and there is a chopper mechanism. So once the fiber chopped here and spread over the surface of uh, this thing. So uh, this is the nozzle which uh, uh, impinges or ejects the resin and the fiber to proper uh, place. Application of spray up process. So lightly loaded structural panel, example, caravan bodies, truck fairing, bus, uh, bus tubes, small boat TTC are made from this thing. So these are the uh, products manufactured using uh, spray up. So advantage is continuous process. Any material can be used as mold. Errors can be corrected by re -spraying. so this is advantage. And this advantage is it is slow, inconsistent, no control of fiber orientation, only one side finished, environmentally unfriendly. So these are uh, the disadvantage. The next manufacturing process is contact molding. So this is almost uh, similar to the past uh, presentations, but here also uh, the tool or the mold is there. On the mold, gel will be coated here. That is the removing agent. And now on that, uh, dry fiber is uh, supplied with in this manner and the resin is supplied. This is resin. So contact molding is uh, actually it's the oldest technique and the most primitive manufacturing process, but also the most widely used around the world. Uh, in contact molding, resin is manually applied to dry reinforced uh, uh, place onto tool surface and can be compared to glowing well, uh, well, uh, wallpaper with a brush. The tool and the fabric are then enclosed by vacuum bag and the air under the bag removed in order to cure the laminate under atmospheric pressure. Cure typically occur at room temperature and the volume uh, fraction of reinforcement is limited to the natural packing density. Further, the quality is totally dependent on the skill of the worker and this is to is impossible to qualify contact mold structure component for commercial aircraft. So this is the application area for the uh, boats. Uh, most part of the boat made from this uh, in this manufacturing process. Another one is vacuum bagging. The vacuum bag process uh, uh, was developed for making variety of components, including relatively large parts with complex shapes. As we see from here, uh, what is required is the mold will be made with the required shape. Then the remaining process is uh, very easy. Use atmospheric freezers to suck air from under a vacuum bag to compact composite layers down and make a high quality laminate. Layers from bottom include okay, mold, uh, mold release, composite, uh, peel ply, breezing, uh, breezer clothes, vacuum bag, also needed uh, vacuum bulb, ceiling tap. So look here, uh, this is the mold which is uh, made for some particular purpose. Uh, here there is a seal which protects the flow of air and uh, resin to this side. Then uh, uh, this, the red one is uh, pre preg layer. Okay, then there is uh, uh, 
uh, gauge or uh, that release valves are there. Again, play. The plays are here, blue color. Uh, again, release film. Uh, air resin bleeder, uh, bleed layer, uh, vacuum bag. Here to the vacuum pump. This goes to the vacuum pump. So this is also another vacuum bagging uh, molding process. So in this, uh, this is the mold. So in the mold cavity, we can see a release film here. Uh, this is the composite. And this is uh, pill play or uh, perforated, uh, perforated uh, release film. Uh, breathing or bleeder is there. And this is vacuum bagging field. So what is the advantage of vacuum bag uh, molding? It is simple design. Uh, any fiber matrix combination can be achieved. Uh, cheap mold material, better quality is low cost. The disadvantage is cannot be heated up too much. Uh, breeder curls has to be replaced frequently and uh, lower pressure at uh, 760 millimeters mercury, the most. So slow speed, inconsistency, these are some disadvantages. Pressure bag molding. This is also almost the same as uh, this type, but uh, is related is vacuum bag molding. So reinforcement placed inside of the female mold just enough rising to allow the fabric to uh, stick place or wet layup. Measured amount of resin is then uh, liberally brushed uh, into the mold end. The mold is then clamped to the machine that contains male flex, uh, flexible mold. The flexible male membrane is then inflated with heated compressed air or possibly with steam. The female mold can also be heated. Excess resin is forced out along the uh, trapped air. So this is the mechanism of pressure bag molding. So the air is um, comes through here. Uh, actually here there is steam or hot water. Uh, again, metal or plastic molds are made. This is uh, resin and glass, that fiber and the resin. This gel coat, uh, mold rele release agent. So these are, this is the flexible bag is inside here. Advantage, wide range of shape can be manufactured, integrate parts consistency, structural stability, relatively simple, but high cost of machine, time consuming to heat up, cool down and uh, curing, expensive molds, no intricate parts can made, large volume production cannot be made. So these are disadvantages. Another uh, production uh, method is thermal expansion molding. So this is almost the same as uh, pressure bagging, but uh, here, uh, low cost manufacturing method for fabricating free re uh, reinforced resin composite structure. And it is simple form, the tooling is self-pressurized by thermal expansion of a solid rubber block. Inside a closed, here there is a solid rubber block Okay, this is the uh, pre pre layers. The pre pre layers is given here. This is the mold, the metallic mold is given here. So, pre pre layers are wrapped around uh, rubber block and then placed in the metal mold. As the entire uh, assembly is heated, the rubber expands more than the metal, putting the pressure on the laminate. So complex shapes can be made, uh, reduce the need for uh, 
lather joining and fastening operation. The next important manufacturing process in composite is poltrugia. That is a continuous process used primarily to produce long, long straight shapes of uh, constant cross section. Poltrugia is similar to extrusion except that the composite material is pulled rather than pushed through a day. So poltrugia is uh, produced using continuous reinforcing fiber called robing that provide longitudinal reinforcement and transverse reinforcement in the form of mat or close material. These reinforcements are resin impregnated by uh, drawing through the resin wet out situation and gently shaped with, within a guide or performing system. They are then subsequently shaped and the curing through perforated dye or a set of dye. Once cured, the poltrugian is saw cut through the required length. Poltrugian can be hollow or solid and applications include bar and rod, pipe, tubing, ladder rails and uh, rings, and support of many kinds. So this is the poltrugian process. Look, these are um, continuous roll of fibers. So this continuous roll of fibers are goes to um, uh, some, uh, this is tension bar actually, here it deep into resin. So resin, it integrated with resin here. And then comes out uh, resin sucked fiber. Again here, dye and heat source are provided here for further. And then goes to uh, pull, pulling mechanisms. This mechanism pulls the fiber from the um, dye and heat source and then comes out to a uh, desired shape. So that is here also more clearly in three dimensionally, we can see the kernel of the fibers are here. This is goes into the uh, resin bars and dipped into resin bars and it impregnated on it and then tensioned and comes to the pre dye former. This free dye more former will uh, provide heat and uh, temperature, and it comes to here. Finally, it gets shape, and the final required shape of uh, raw material will cut at this uh, using uh, different cut mechanisms, the uh, composite uh, cut cutting mechanism. So, this is the final shape. Here also the same. Okay. Reinforcements, resin injection, heating and curing, pulling device, ventilation, and so that uh, the required part will be cut. This is also poltrugian process. There is no difference. So this is the lab poltrugian machine. This is the schematic of uh, the machine. These are the products that we obtain from protrusion process. The best example, the Bank of American Building Spire is made from by protrusion process. This is the structures, different structure made. Uh, small, uh, small uh, utensils that actually not utensils, but a small uh, products which are helpful in our uh, electrical installation purpose. So these all are poltrugian uh, products. Advantage of poltrugian are uh, it is automated process, high speed, versatile across sectional shape, continuous reinforcement. And the disadvantage of poltrugian process is Dye can be easily uh, missed up, and expensive dyes, and manually thermoset matrix. 
uh, mainly uh, thermoset matrix are used, sorry. This is uh, reaction injection molding. It is the type of also filtration process. Here, the fibers are uh, common to resin chamber. And here, uh, different uh, tanks containing the uh, resin uh, provide uh, resin here. So both of them combine together or dip and comes through the heat dye. And the final goes the fuller. This is the fuller, which pulls the uh, heated uh, material to the required. So here the cutting process. So almost the same. This uh, resin transfer, uh, injection molding is almost the same as that uh, region. Pool forming is also Another, uh, here in the full forming, so uh, the issue is there. This already ready. This is the actually post-manufacturing process. Once the manufactured shapes comes uh, to here to get a, a shape like this, whenever we want to get the different shapes, we can uh, use this full forming. So full forming process, uh, not shown in the uh, sketch here. Another main uh, uh, composite manufacturing process is filament winding. Filament winding is typically, it is a fabrication technique that focus on a particular type of uh, movement. And in manufacturing open, uh, metal circular solids or closed end structures like enclosed tanks or uh, pressure belts can be manufactured from this process. The procedure has winding filament under tension over rotating one ray, usually uh, mixed with cohesive substance. Mix it near uh, for, uh, perfection. So, look, this is a filament winding technique. This is filament winding. So, this is the continuous rubbing. The continuous rubbing fibers comes in, and here a pulleys, two pulleys are placed here to make uh, tension. And then it dipped into resin bars. And then from resin bars goes to the winding or this rotating mandrel. The rotating mandrel is here. Uh, there is some uh, rotation mechanism given from uh, some power source. So in this mechanism, we can get uh, uh, this thing. So this all are uh, uh, filament winding process. The products obtained from filament winding, for example, uh, the F-16, uh, that fighter jet uh, doom co cones, uh, Patriot missiles core, uh, gas tanks. These are uh, some other uh, so aerospace missiles, like the motors of the uh, rockets are manufactured from using this method. So, advantage of uh, filament winding, it uses a, a existing textile process, a quick, easy to handle package. Parts can have huge size. Disadvantage, spinning speed is limited due to resin penetration and uh, splash travel speed and uh, yarn breakage. Curing by heat is not easy to apply. And shape of the product limited, only cylindrical is possible. Vacuum bagging molding. So the vacuum bagging uh, process was developed for making variety of components, including uh, relatively large parts with complex shape. Applications are large cruising boats, racer components, and so on. So use atmospheric pressure to suck air from uh, under vacuum bag 
to compact composite layers uh, down and make high quality lungs. Layers from bottom include mold, mold release, composite, film line, freezer, vacuum bag, and also uh, vacuum valves are also needed. This is a vacuum bag uh, process. I think we have discussed it in uh, one slide before. So this is uh, redundant. So the second, uh, so anyways, it is important. This is also the vacuum assisted resin transfer molding, almost the same as vacuum bagging process. Uh, autoclave molding is also another important one. So in autoclave molding, uh, these are the products that we can obtain from autoclave molding. So two sided mold states are required, lower uh, side rigid mold, so upper side flexible membrane made from silicon or no, silicon or an extrude polymer film. The reinforcement material can be placed manually or robotically, including continuous fiber form, fashioned into textile constructions, and they use use of autoclave pressure vessel. Process generally performed at both elevated pressure and uh, elevated temperature. Uh, elevated pressure facilitates the high uh, fiber volume fraction. And elevated pressure yields low void content for the maximum structural efficiency. So this void is not required. And an appropriate volume fraction of fiber is required in the composite for proper application. The next manufacturing process is uh, uh, in composite is compression molding. So in compression molding, we need uh, dyes, the top and the bottom dye, or we call male and female uh, dyes are required. And uh, this thing is actually post uh, manufacturing process, I can say. Why? Because we can get the already manufactured um, composites to reshape it further, or we can uh, make new molds on it. Anyways, so this is the male dye, and this is the uh, female dye having a cavity, and the strip of uh, blank is placed here, and when this male is uh, pressed against the female, uh, it will, uh, we can get the shape of this thing. And this is the slide guide. So make a hot press. Another, uh, we can place uh, charts. This is for um, producing new uh, product. The charge or the, uh, the required material will be placed here. And the mail <laughs> Uh, will be pressed against the female, then uh, we can get a shape like this. Top mold and bottom mold. So this is the shape, the final shape obtained. And that part rejected or uh, ejected from here using some ejection mechanism. Uh, that is the part of uh, uh, tool designers. So they uh, prefer ejector for uh, removing material from the mold cavity. So compression molding is uh, a way of molding in general, but in this case, uh, in which mold material commonly uh, being preheated is placed in open heated compression mold cavity and among the first step of the process. So this is also another uh, compression molding uh, mechanism. Here we place the uh, charge. The charge in this case is the raw material. And we have a uh, male mold half that is movable. And the fixed female mold half is at the bottom. There is a ejection mechanism, pins here. And uh, the shear edge also here. So, this um, 
movable uh, mold half will come into this position and press the uh, charger and provide the required shape. Here also the same thing. Here also the same thing. This is the machine, the compression molding machine in uh, in uh, labs. Resin transfer molding is also another uh, type of molding. So this is the resin transfer molding mechanism. So that consists uh, bottom half and the top half, that is male and female uh, halves. Actually, this one is different from this. In this case, uh, bottom mold is the female one and the top is the male one. In this case, the bottom is the male one and the top is the female one. Anyways, the working principle or mechanism is the same. So mix it, uh, mixing he, uh, head is here. Uh, through this line, resin uh, injection port. This is called resin injection port. And this is vent port. When there is uh, air and some excess material there, it will be ejected through this. And this is the reinforced material or the... Uh, uh, so, this is a complete schematic of uh, resin transfer uh, molding. What are the products that, that we can get from it? These are some of the products. Sheet molding. So, Sheet molding is another manufacturing, uh, composite manufacturing process that uh, is a compression molding compound often used for large parts where high mechanical strength is needed. So thermoset sheet molding compound or SMHC, uh, you can see it. This is a thermoset, um, uh, thermoset, um, Yeah, SMHC. Uh, yeah, here, sheet molding. So resins, additives, fillers are all given here in the uh, hopper, and which goes to uh, this thing. And the fibers are given through this, and there is a chopper here that to cut the fiber into a small uh, piece. So there, the chopped fiber and the uh, resin together uh, made a form here. This is a conveyor belt here. There is also continuous fiber also provided from here. Chopped fiber provided from here. Resin is coming from here, here also. And all together make a form and comes to a uh, roll sheet. So as you see it from here, you see, these are glass fiber roving is here. This is a glass fiber roving. And this is a crater film, okay? And um, this is a crater film. All of them come together here and make a form. Okay, resin uh, pastes here. Then uh, compression rollers are here. And finally it is uh, rolled into this sheet. So uh, the materials are sheeted both top and the bottom with uh, polyethylene or uh, nylon plastic film to prevent auto addition. The paste is sprayed uniformly onto the bottom film chopped glass fiber are randomly uh, deposited onto the paste. The two film is introduced and the sandwich is rolled onto uh, predetermined thickness. The sheet is allowed to uh, mature or, uh, for uh, about 48 hours. So this is the thing. So what is the advantage? High productivity and inexpensive or less uh, expensive and consistency. And this advantage is low uh, volume production, only uh, 
board can be made from this thing. So that is disadvantage. This is a bulk molding process. That extrusion process, for example, extrusion uh, compression process is another. How it works? Uh, thermoplastic granulates are provided to the hooper here and the uh, roller uh, conveyors are there. So polymer feeder to this port. And also rowing uh, cheese or the uh, fibers are come through this, from this place, that glass fiber feeder, this is the feeder. Both of them uh, are mixed at this mixing chamber. So this uh, mixing through the mixing chamber and goes the raw material, this mixed raw material comes to the nozzle here. And then the raw material will transfer from the extrusion to compression phase. So, and this, the uh, post-forming process or after extrusion forming process or compression will be take place here to the desired shape. So this is uh, the... So advantage of bulk uh, molding is highest volume uh, fraction for short fiber reinforced composites up to 50% of volume fraction of, of fiber uh, can be achieved. Good mechanical properties uh, obtained. Finish can be applied. Inserts and attachments possible. Disadvantage, high temperature and high pressure. Random fiber rotation cannot be used for intricate parts. Uh, shapes. Uh, cannot uh, be used for intricate shapes as staple fibers only. Another is thermoplastic um, uh, injection molding. This thermoplastic injection molding is the process of melting plastic uh, plates. Sorry. Sorry, ones. So, thermosetting or thermoplastic that once malleable enough are injected at pressure into mold cavity, which fill and solidifies or uh, uh, produce the final uh, product. So, this is the thermoplastic injection molding process. Okay, we can easily see it from here. This is three-dimensional representation of the process, and this is two-dimensional. So in this case, uh, clamping mechanisms are there and injection mechanisms are there. So similar to the previous, um, raw materials are uh, fed into the hooper here, and uh, there is a lead screw which uh, conveys the raw materials to this uh, injection or uh, molten plastic materials comes through the nozzle and there is a mold cavity. This is a mold cavity. On the mold cavity, the part will be molded on it. Okay. Then um, by uh, releasing the clamp, we can take out the part and we can continue the process. So this is a thermoplastic injection molding process. This is also the same, yeah. This is uh, uh, cylinders for screw arm, feeder hooper, um, heat, uh, heaters, okay, barrel, the nozzle, or uh, this is the required shape of the product, or... Uh, so this is the complete schematic of uh, injection molding. Finally, roll molding. Actually, this roll molding is also post-processing uh, operation. That once the uh, free prepared um, composites with a flat shape composite already prepared, 
and feed into the system and to get some other shape. This is another shaping process, role forming is. For example, in this case, some eye section can be obtained using the uh, different uh, uh, shaping process. Here, uh, this type of shape is obtained. Stamp forming is also another uh, uh, post-treatment process for thermoplastic composite material. As a variation of compression molding that is similar to sheet metal forming. In this case, look, intermediate uh, material, uh, there is um, already prepared uh, laminate is there. Intermediate material is also provided, and both of them are heated together here, then provided to some uh, dye cavity, forming dyes. Then the forming dye consolidates and solidifies, then the uh, raw material will be, or the component with desired shape will be taken out here. Finally, the composite cutting process, that is uh, the main <coughs> thing. Composites are not uh, such easy to cut or to uh, shear out or to drill and other operations on composite will induce uh, maximum damage. So that proper type of cutting or shearing mechanisms are required, unless and otherwise will spoil or damage the composite. So uh, care is required. So the cutting of uh, cutting of uh, fiber reinforced polymer laminate composite is required in both uncured and cured states. So in uncured states, uh, typically cutting tools like knife, with scissor, power shear, and steel roll, blanking dice are uh, sufficient. Non-traditional methods like uh, laser beam cutting and water jet cutting are required. In the cured form, uh, we use uh, high-speed steel uh, saw blades. Uh, we use the uh, diamond cutting tools. We use water jet cutting. So these are uh, appropriate cutting mechanisms. So this is uh, the water cutting uh, cutter, water jet cutter. So it gives good surface finish uh, with uh, no damage on the uh, uh, joint of uh, laminations. So finally, uh, different process uh, having different applications as we have discussed in every section, hand layup for uh, low cost for lower strings for large part relatively low cost uh, tooling when this is a demand hand layup process is required application large commercial parts cost is more important than high strings or low weight then we use this thing vacuum bagging oven cure uh, auto autoclave cure resin transfer molding, vacuum assisted resin transfer, compression molding, bonded metals and other uh, are. So this is uh, uh, today's lecture. So I really thanks for your patience. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello, Mr. Hello, hello. Hello. Uh, 
हेलो 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 चार्लटन हेलो प्रोफेसर या हाँ ओके ओके सो सो आई फिनिश नाउ प्रेजेंटेशन ऑलरेडी फिनिश सो एनीथिंग लेफ्ट हाँ ओके ओके 